Mad Lab Performance presents The Lab Podcast. Here's your host and chief mad scientist, Dan Gilbert. Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of The Lab. I'm here with Alec Bulat. Alec, how are you doing today? Doing well, Dan. How are you? I am great. Executive producer, fitness professional. Yep. Uh, we need to come up with some other titles for you because there's probably the list is endless. I'm sure. Nah, it's not really that one. A student. Congratulations on your test. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. We don't really need to talk about that on, on air, but... Well, that's all I'll say then. I'm also here with the wolf dog. Cut that out, Mike. No explanation needed. No, no cut out. We will cut nothing. We will cut nothing out. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by FNX Fitness. If you're looking for a supplement company that will help you rise up, look no further than FNX Fitness. With products ranging from Recharge to help amp up your workout, Restart for your AM protein blend or rebalance for all of your green, super green needs, actually. Whether it be gaining muscle or just looking to live a healthier life, FNX will help you get there. For 15% off of all FNX products, use the code, Alec, MADLAB, capital M, capital L. That is correct. MADLAB, yeah. yes. For 15% off, put that in your cart at checkout, mm-hmm. and that way we can get you closer to all of your nutritional goals. Alec, what are we talking about today? So today, we're doing something a little bit different. All right. We're going to talk a little bit about personal training development, like as a manager, but also oh. a little bit of, uh, I'm going to use air quotes for this one, sales tactics, right? Um, I like to use air quotes for that because I think it's uh, people who hear the word sales tactics. <laughs> Hear the make word it. sales lack of coffee tactics. In your yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, sorry for if my energy seems low today, guys. I'm trying to go without coffee, and it's uh, arguably one of the hardest tasks I've ever put on myself. Um, I'm two days in already, and I feel like I'm dying slowly. Uh, bear with me. Anyways, so we're going to talk about quote-unquote sales tactics, and the reason I use the air quotes is because I think that it is something that is associated in a negative way oftentimes by people no oh, for sure so uh i figured we would pick your brain especially today because you have not only had many different fitness director positions or related positions you've coached a lot of trainers you've built up a lot of businesses you currently have built up your own business that you're running and i'm working for you so <laughs> the old lab <laughs> yep the good old lab um and you've you know done a lot of personal training sales along the way Matter of fact, actually, I know you don't like to throw this out there very nah. much, but uh, you wrote a book that is available and on Amazon. It is so, like a manual, I guess. It's whatever it is. I'm gonna say it's a book. So <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. There we go. You wrote a book on tra- personal training sales. So yes. let's go ahead and talk a little bit first and foremost about your ideas behind personal training development. I want to hear a little bit about like you as a manager bringing on new trainers. Right. What are some of the things that you do with people coming into your gym that you have just hired right away? I feel like it probably starts with what you want from the product, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so for me, I know a certain way that I want people to train. Uh, I know how I want them to speak. I know how I want them to sell training, and I know how I want how I want them to feel in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. When I interview people, I have those expectations, right? So as far as how I want them uh, to speak and how I want them to train, I want to have a way, like a conceptual way of training where people are like, all right, um, here's our base movements. Here's what we're concentrating on. Here's the way we go about uh, this kind of goal, this kind of goal, but have them have creative control over it, Mm -hmm. right? So that there should be a foundation in place though, so that if you train somebody and I train somebody, we both speak the same language to them. We both talk about the same concepts. However, we might train them differently. Yeah. Right? But we're going to arrive pretty much at the same goal. Uh, so I keep that in mind. I also want people work in the workplace to feel comfortable. And I think that comes with confidence and knowledge. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and confidence and knowledge are best built through processes. So you should have a process by which to do a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. My gripe a lot of times with the fitness industry and with development and really in businesses in general is people have these expectations of the people they hire, but then they don't have a process to get them to their expectations. Yeah. Uh, And there's no clearer example of this 
than, than sales, mm-hmm. right? But it does go into even, even programming. So if I talk to somebody and I find out where they are as a trainer and I hire them on, if that person doesn't have an extensive, ex- extensive experience in, in sales at all, like if they've never built their business before, then I should know that when I bring them on. Mm-hmm. And I can't just be like, oh, you have the personality to sell, go out and sell. Yeah. Right? I need to have a process set up for them to get clients if that's my expectation right, uh, for them. So then I should have a, a specific way to teach them that and then how they're going to go through that and even down to maybe how long it should take. Uh, you know, Everybody's a little bit different and that should be expected as well. Uh, yeah. Training should be the same way. If I bring somebody on and they've never, I've never seen them train anybody or even if I have them training as part of the interview process, maybe they like train a person or something like that uh, or I, like maybe one of the trainers or something so I can kind of see it, uh, see what they do. If I'm not like, oh, they already train exactly like us. They already like have the same ideas as of us and everything. Unless I know that for a fact, which would be really tough in an interview process, even a lengthy one, then I should have a way to teach them that. And if they do accelerate through that, then I should accelerate them through that, right? So like if for yourself, for example, we thought a lot the same way of training. Mm-hmm. We talked about a little bit. We went through some developments, but you already thought and read like some of the same people and did a lot of the research that we did. So we were in agreement on a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So your training was accelerated very quickly. And you got to see clients quick, right? Somebody else might be brand new. We just hired two new people. Uh, They're brand new to training. So they're going to take a lot longer because we want them to get them up to speed before they have any clients. Uh, So again, it needs to be, I feel like it needs to be pretty involved. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. And I think the interesting one and one that I really wanted to talk about today, especially too, was uh, when it comes to business development as well, right? Um, and the only reason I think both are equally as important, right? I just want to clarify that now, but I think that just as something topic wise for us to to kind of continue on right now, let's think a little bit more towards the business end of things. Okay. Um, and I really, I want to hear kind of like a little bit more of like an idea of like, you have somebody who's never sold anything in their entire life. Right. And personal training sales can be really intimidating right away. Right? Especially for somebody new when they're sitting down in a consultation for the first time ever trying to close a sale. That's really tough. Like that's, there's a lot going on through their brain. They're re- probably really nervous. H- how do you get them through that process? So I think process again is a, is the word. There should be a specific process they follow so they know what to do at almost any given moment. Mm-hmm. Also, the process should be about the person in front of them. Are they making that person feel comfortable? Yeah. Are they making that person feel important? And they should also have a belief in their training. So that's why, again, a lot of the education is so important because yeah. they should feel like that if that person says yes to train with them and then pays money for them, that they're worth it. Where a lot of trainers, I think especially new ones, mm-hmm. uh, it's tough for them to charge for training at first or even ask for prices yeah. because they, they still don't have the confidence that they're worth it. And if you don't have the confidence that your product is worth it, yeah. then nothing nothing else is going to matter yep. until you figure that out. So with a bit of imposter syndrome. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a really good, uh, that's a really good um, phrase for it, yeah. uh, for sure. Um, but I, w- I would say coming up with a, a process to have all that happen is really important, mm-hmm. right? Um, if we're talking about business development and so just getting people in front of them that's one of my that's one of my big gripes about the industry also Mm -hmm. because when i came in the industry and you you probably had some of the same things go on Mm because i I know where you worked before and you know every you know every district manager every fitness director all of them are going to be different but a lot of them are taught the same stuff yeah right you get somebody new in they've never done sales before what do you do You go, and they're obviously not going to be comfortable. So you go, all right, well, how can we make you the most, uh, how can we make you even more uncomfortable? Here's an idea. Sales is about numbers. So if you talk to 100 people, then 80 people are going to, like 70 people are going to sign up for you or whatever, and then 50 of them are going to show up, and then 20 of them are going to close, and then you'll make a million dollars a month after that. Like like the numbers are just ridiculous. They make it Mm -hmm. all a numbers game. So then they send you out on the floor, and they go, all right, Alec, I need you to go talk to... 20 people today try to book 12 appointments yeah and you don't tell them exactly how to talk to them like you should have a way for this to happen yeah. right instead it's like all right go bother somebody while they're working out and try to book the appointment right there there's very few more uncomfortable situations that you can set up <laughs> yeah than that and that one drives me crazy another one i see is uh set up a table 
with a uh, with a fat monitor mm-hmm. and then have people find out how much body fat that they have. Yeah. Right. So if you're saying that every person, somebody's already uncomfortable going to the gym, let's say it's like uh, it's Susie's first time in the gym. She mm-hmm. is trying to lose weight. She might be like 40, 50 pounds of weight. Maybe it's like 20 or whatever. But regardless, she's uncomfortable and maybe she's never, never, ever been in the gym before. First day in. And you're going to be like, hey, we're doing this. Hold this, and she maybe she thinks it's part of a part of what she's supposed to do. So then she goes up, she holds the thing. It says that she's overweight, mm-hmm. which she already knew. And then the trainer tries to book an appointment, of which she may say yes to because she feels forced into it, or she just like maybe freaks out and says no. Either way, nothing you did right there made her comfortable. Yeah, like that just screwed up everything. Yeah, it's so fascinating because yes. you literally just listed two things that not only was I taught but also used when I, I was me too. in the industry especially as a fitness, as a fit, personal trainer and fitness director. That's how we were taught. Yeah. Yeah. I taught, yeah. Uh, I had it happen, so I had to go do it. Yep. And then at first, when I was a fitness director, I taught it yeah. too, because that's what I was taught. That's and that's what my, my bosses would tell me to do. Yep. And then I watched it happen, and I was like, this is a disaster. I was yep. like, this is also not how I ever build business with anything. And, and also, this is not how I ever want to do business. Yeah. And part of business and what makes people successful in business is that they have passion. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to be passionate about something that you don't like, right? So I was like, well, if I'm going to stay in this industry, i got to figure out a way to like this. And believe it or not, if you make people feel comfortable and you make them feel important, then they, uh, one, they will do a, a lot. They will listen to you with a lot of things that you say and believe in what you say mm-hmm. uh, to do. And then also they'll do more, they'll, they'll be more apt to reach their potential, right? right? Whether it's an employee or it's a client uh, or whoever, Right. So then you have to have a way to do that. So for me, I wanted my if I was at a commercial gym, for example, instead mm-hmm. of doing that, I know I want to do a more long term thing. Because let's say I have a new uh, trainer. If I haven't taught them anything about training or programming at all, then what happens if they book 10 appointments on the floor? That's amazing. Yeah. But they can't service those 10 appointments by themselves. Yeah. So then I'm really servicing them and they're shadowing. It's not the, it's definitely not the worst scenario. Mm-hmm. However, it should be more of a long term play anyway. Right. Because uh, I have to teach them programming. I have to teach them sales. Right. I have to teach them the assessment also because I have an assessment process that I think is a big part of the sale as well. And I also think it helps the trainers uh, when they're going through the process because the assessment process is very comprehensive. It's not cookie cutter. And I feel like they when they're doing it, they feel really good about it. They feel smart. And when and people are never see this assessment process before. uh, feel like they're getting something high level and that, you know, they feel more comfortable and feel like the trainer is really smart and the trainer feels like they're doing something really good. Mm -hmm. And that is just a better atmosphere for it. But I still have to teach that as well. So then I want my trainer to go up and have as many conversations as possible, even if it's literally just a couple words. Mm -hmm. So I go, all right, Alec, I want you to walk around the gym today and I want you to say hi. That's it. Hi, how are you? To 20 different people. Yeah. That's it. And don't try to, if they're not going to have a conversation with you, don't say that. Just say, hey, how are you doing? And walk by. If they say something to you and they're like, uh, hey, this is a piece of equipment, da, 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 I don't know about this, then talk to them about that. And then I tell them how they can set up a consultation from there yeah. right? And, or an assessment or a s- smart start. I've heard them. There, there's a million Whatever different, you want to right, call right, it. Whatever yeah. you want to call that first appointment. So they can book an appointment from there. And I tell them how to do that. And you know, at first they're not as successful as they could be, but they start having conversations. Yeah. Also, people in the gym know their face and know their new trainer. Some people want to talk and they see a new trainer. And the new trainer says, hey, how are you doing? And they go, hey, are you a new trainer here? I've never seen you before. Da, da, da. And mm-hmm. like people will just start a conversation. At the very least, they get their face out there and people start to become comfortable with them. Yeah. And even the people that they say hi to, if they're saying hi every day, then that person, if they're not talk, if they don't talk to a lot of people in the gym, and that same person has said hi to them like ten times in a row, if something happens in the gym, they're more apt to go to that person than anybody else, yeah. because that person has said hi to them with no connection, like no business connection or anything, that many times, so they feel more comfortable with that person. That's just part of humanity, yeah. right? So I would rather even just start there and then have a way of of taking the conversa- uh, conversation to an appointment after that if that person starts asking about um, any kind of movements, any kind of exercise, anything about the machines or exercise equipment. Uh, or sometimes people just like talk to you about personal training right now. For sure, man. And that's how we've gotten a ton of business from a commercial gym. Yeah. And I think one of the important notes that I 
thought of about midway through what you're talking about, right? And this is, I think, a really important one for people in especially commercial fitness industry, right? Is a lot of what you were talking about is essentially having trust and patience with the process, right? Yes. And unfortunately, that feels very contrary to what a lot of people are taught, right? Like I know for myself in particular, right? We almost, we had specific goals, right? That each new trainer was supposed to hit as soon as they got in. Oh, yeah. Right? So we were given, yeah, exactly. We were given specific numbers. Matter of fact, even I was, you know, especially when your gym is struggling a little bit and you're trying to up those numbers and you're trying to really build up, right? So you can hit that monthly budget, right? Because that's that's the important part, right? Yeah, yeah. The important part is hitting that monthly budget. Um, You start upping those numbers and you start expecting more and you start just wanting go, go, go. You You want them out there with clients as fast as possible but the cool part about what you have essentially built right is it's like hey slow it down this is a process learn develop and i know you paused because i said hey i didn't say anything i I I saw it i saw it i saw it i thought you were gonna Um, ask me to front squat no or learn about front squatting something else something else whatever you know as long (laughs) as you got the pregnant pause in there people are gonna take it seriously exactly do tomorrow do tomorrow (laughs) That is important. God, I hope this just every episode has something like this. <laughs> um, as far as, so that's an interesting thing in, in all business, yeah. uh, really. So if you, it, it does get strange if, like, let's say I'm a fitness director and I have quotas to meet. Yeah. Or I'm a trainer and I have quotas to meet. Either way, yeah. right? And I have to meet them really quick. And it doesn't really seem doable. It's probably not a place that I want to work. Mm -hmm. But you can look into the business and be like, why is this happening? Yeah. Right. Uh, This is happening because people lack a process and lack foresight. Right. Right. Right now, we just we just hired two people. And I'm not saying I do everything right or whatever, but it just seems like common sense to me. You hire people with not with the knowledge that you need to develop them. Unless you know you're going to hire, you're going to have a stable of people that already have experience and already have the personalities that you want. Yeah. Right. Which is. That's a lot to ask, uh, especially in the market now, because if you're looking for employees that like are, are pretty picture perfect, uh, that's difficult. A lot of, a lot of times you're going to have to develop them. Yeah. It's just like, uh, it's just like an NFL team going, Oh, you know what? We're going to be fine next year because we're going to just going to get four free agents that are going to love to come here mm-hmm. to our crappy team. And they're just going to, they're definitely going to sign and we're going to pay them X amount of dollars and we'll be fine. We'll be under the salary cap. So we'll just, we'll cross that bridge in free agency. Yeah. Like yeah. 31 other teams aren't trying to do the same thing. Yeah. Right. Uh, so if you want to build a successful business, one of the things that you have to do is develop talent. Yeah. So if you don't know how to develop talent, then you need to figure out how to develop talent. Yeah. If you can't do that, then get out of that industry. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you should look ahead and go, all right, I probably be, the way things are going, let's say it takes me two months to develop somebody because that's probably where we're at usually from somebody new. I get somebody I, that way I can hire for passion. I can hire for personality and I can find a good amount of those. And then I can hire for um, somebody that's reasonably intelligent and responsible. They have to be really responsible because I'm not managing that. Right. So I want to I want those things because those are things that I can't teach or I'm unwilling to teach. Right. Mm hmm. So if they have those, I can teach them sales. I can teach them training, especially if I have two months to do so. That way they don't have some crazy quota because I screwed up and I hired them when I needed them yesterday, right? And then that, if I do that, even if I did that, it's still not their fault that yeah. I did that. That's my fault. And so I should take the loss if I did, if I did do that instead of just like pouring um, expectations on them mm-hmm. out of nowhere, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and that's another frustration with me. If I hire you and I go, Alec, Look, I'm I'm looking for somebody in this position, but here's what I'm gonna need. I mean, I'm literally gonna need you to sell eight thousand dollars a month in training in a month. Mm-hmm. Here's how rare that is. <laughs> and then I'm like, I mean, literally like two percent of the trainers that are new could do that, may, maybe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you want this job? That's honest. And if you take that job, you're taking a risk. Yeah. And I'd be like, I can be like, look, it is really high pressure sales. Da 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 da. That does not happen. Yeah. at all so then your hiring process instead because you're just thinking about hiring the person in front of you you're like all right well i'm all stressed out i know that this person needs to be up to speed really quick here's my interview process though which is crazy to me because you're kind of lying to him you're like alec personal training is a is is a great way 
to build your own business and make money. I mean, really, it is it is like your own business, yeah. and it's however you build it. Yep. If you want to make whatever amount of money you can, you want to make, you can do that here. You just you just have to work hard, and you have to make the hours fit, and you just you just have to follow a process. It's all a numbers game. You know, it's how many people are you going to talk to, and how many phone calls are you going to make. If you do those things, though, the sky's the limit for you. And that's the conversation that you get all the time. Mm -hmm. That is insane to me because then you're taking a new person, you're trying to give them all this hope, and then day one, you're going to give them all this pressure. You haven't taught them anything yeah. except for whatever that, that speech was that you just said yeah. about the sky's the limit. And I can't tell you how many times I've been told that yeah. uh, in interviews. Luckily, I had already a lot of the interviews that I did like that. Yeah. I just kind of was like, all right, well, I already know what they're doing, but luckily I know how to do this, so yeah. I will just do whatever. And unfortunately, by day 30, they're already feeling downtrodden for right? sure because they haven't hit those results they haven't gotten there and they're they're wondering they're left wondering what they've been doing wrong this entire time and trying to understand why they're not being as successful as they thought they were going to be right because when you build somebody up and give them the opportunity that sky is the limit right you're essentially as you're saying you're setting that expectation really high right away right and then especially you're putting your own expectations because you have expectations coming down to you right you're putting those expectations on them as well which once again is just building upon that, you know, just compounding interest of crazy stress coming to them. And that's why trainers, there's such a high turnover rate, right? I've, I've seen this myself with yeah. my own team that I had. I, I had a pretty significant turnover rate right away. Um, I brought on a lot of people and unfortunately didn't have a good process. Really, I didn't develop a process for developing trainers until I was about nine months into the job. And that was because I sat down and created my own Right. I took my I took some time and I was just like, you know what, this is going to be a process I'm going to, going to develop for new trainers. And even then, Good for you. that's smart, though. I mean, I, at that point, I had to. Yeah. I, was, I was desperate. But a lot was, of people don't, don't do that. Well, so that's that might that's be true. Commendable. But I was I was true. desperate. I, for, you, I, was, I haven't seen <laughs> I haven't seen it too much in my own uh, in my own eyes. Subjectively, I haven't seen it a lot. But um, but I, I don't doubt for a second that that's really true. I bet that's true. A ton of places across the board. But, um, but I think the, the biggest thing that I found was even with that training process that I put together, it still felt like it was a rough draft, right? There was so much still that I wanted to like, you know, put together. And, um, and I think one of the things I was lacking from the start, right, was once again, that patience that you were talking about just now, um, that patience for the process, right? The process of not only understanding how to train and this is huge as well. You said it. But normally we let people suffer a lot until they get to this point is having confidence in their product, right? Because I know for yeah. myself as a trainer, I didn't feel confident in my product until I was at probably a good like certain amount of months or maybe even a year in, right? Like I would I would sit down with people. Oh, I, for sure. I enjoyed what I did. I knew I I knew that I kind of knew what I was doing, but I didn't have that confidence, right? It, it it only really came once I had my business starting to grow and grow that I really started to feel confident with everything that I was doing. Right. And not a lot of people are willing to take the time to get to that point. And everybody else is going to feel that way, too. Of so course. then that's what you should look for when you're trying to develop a business, especially when it's predicated on talent. So like yeah. unless you're doing all the business yourself, if you're hiring people, that's what you have to look at. Right. I like to look at it uh, a pretty common sense of approach that somebody smarter than me. Sorry, but I follow this religiously. Hmm. So I always like uh, I always follow it like, do you have the right people. Yeah. Do you have the right product? And then do you have the right process? If one of those is broken, your business is broken and you know what to fix. Yeah. Right. Uh, with people, you need to find out a way that you're going to develop them. Uh, you got to have the right people in front of you. So, and you got to mm -hmm. figure out what that means. Right. So like, what are you going to hire for? Do you need experience? If you don't need experience, then you probably need passion in whatever they're doing. You need passion in the industry or a passion for people. Uh, do they need people skills? Because yeah. that's not something you necessarily can teach. I mean, you can like, uh, you can hone it. You can hone their skills. Yeah. But you can't really like teach them to be like, all right, I need you to be. What are you going to teach manners and and a way to speak the whole time? And I don't know why you'd be even willing to teach all that. So just hire that, right? So why are you teaching personality, um, responsibility? You know, if they're not showing up on time, and you're micromanaging that, why are you micromanaging that? Yeah. Like that is not something that should be on your team, and you shouldn't. You should hire for that. 
right? If you have an interview process and you have three interviews and some of the reason you have three interviews, one of the big reasons to see how they show up to three interviews, Mm -hmm. right? That can be part of your process uh, for your hiring process, right? If they show up the first time 15 minutes early, second time 15 minutes early, third time 15 minutes early, you're probably not going to have an issue with them. Yeah. Right. If yeah. all of those are late or you get a phone call like right at the time, all the time, then you have to wonder about that person and you mm-hmm. might have to micromanage that. And if you have to micromanage anything like that, that's probably something that you don't need in your, on your team in the first place. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you should set expectations with your people. Here are the expectations, the realistic expectations. This is what's going to happen. Here's what we expect from you. And here's what you can expect from us. Right. And then it's your job as a leader to make sure that the expectations are met on your end and then it's their job uh, to have expectations met on their end. And if it's not, then that's somebody that you also don't need to continue business with, right? And then that's very clear too. So like you were like, here's X, Y, and Z. It's all written in. Okay, you didn't do this, so you're out. A lot of people struggle with that though. They don't set those expectations and then people run around them. Then they have to micromanage those people and then because they have like 10, 20, 100, whatever many employees, they blanket manage all of them based on that one problem. Mm-hmm. And then they have now a problem if they have 100 employees, instead of having a problem with one employee, they now have a problem with 99. Yeah. And that drives me crazy too. Do you have a process to do all the things that you do? Even from just like getting a sale. If you if somebody buys something from your business, uh, whether it be training or something else or like an item or whatever it is, do you have a process by which you get that customer, you speak to that customer, you have the customer come in or get interested in the product, mm-hmm. um, you get them to a sales point, and then you sell them, and then whether, if it's service related, do you have a process by which you continue service, right? So if it's training, then you need to have a process by which they're, they're serviced, right? Of course. Uh, or if it's an item, if they're not happy with it, do you have a process by which they can return it, or that you can talk to them about it, or you help them with whatever issues that they have and troubleshoot? Yeah. Uh, so like, Those things are extremely important. If you don't have those processes, you're going to be in trouble as well. And is your product even worth buying? Again, whether it be an item, like a clothing item or uh, like a food or beverage or whatever it is, uh, or is it a a service like training? Is your training any good? Because if it's not and then that's the problem, then that should be what's fixed. Yeah. But to me, all three of those problems are fixable. You just got to figure out what problems you have in your business. And that's usually why your business is, uh, there's an issue with it. Absolutely, man. And I want to ask a quick question I guess, sidebar question about um, something that we've talked about in the past, right? When it talk, when we're talking about managing expectations um, is you do something that I've actually had people do in the past, managers of mine, right? That I thought was really a really good way to go about it. I was hoping um, you were going to say it was really terrible. And I was like, oh man. Yeah, it was awful. Right. The worst thing I ever. Love it. Yeah, I'm going to come at you with the hot fire takes right now. <laughs> no. um, it's live. <laughs> So It'll be deer in the head like like their first day. Yeah, of this exactly whole thing. right. Yeah, nobody saw <laughs> that. Like, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll get a blooper reel together at some point, and that yeah, would be, be something. It'll probably just be on me because <laughs> I'm the only one that makes these big mistakes all the time. No, there's plenty of other ones. Trust me, we got the entire thing of. Uh, I don't think people have they seen the the uh, super greens athletic greens thing that I'm doing or what is it, the FNX? Oh God. Oh, that whole, fi- that was a yeah, fiasco. That was a fiasco. Yeah. Just now is a fiasco. Honestly, I couldn't remember what it was called. Um, re, re, rebalance, rebalance. That's what, that were FNX rebalance. Go, go get in the stores, boys and yes. girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so back to what we were talking about though. You said, uh, you had mentioned in particularly that you sat down with your entire team and you've done this a few times and you as far as managing managing their own expectations, you ask them, how much would you like to be making? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and yeah. I think that's a huge, huge asset, right? Because this kind of comes back to what you're talking about as far as people goes, right? Is is your population happy? Are the people there happy right now? Are they making what they want to be making? Right? I think that's an important notion because at the end of the day, like what you want to be doing as a manager is making sure that your team is happy being there, right? Yeah, because otherwise you're going to transition... So even like not even looking at it from a human standpoint, because yeah. I look at everything from a human standpoint. Uh, so like that seems like a really easy argument from there because you just want people to be happy. Around yeah, of course. Like that's yeah. which is like sh- which everybody should feel, especially as a leader. But even if you just take that part out and you just look at it from a business aspect, transition causes problems, especially in service, like long term service industries. Right. So like personal training should be long term service. You should have people training with you for months, for years. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, or even if it's, even if you don't have training clients that long, if you're in a gym where you want customers for that long, 
Yeah. And maybe the training clients are shorter for whatever reason. I mean, it shouldn't really be. But uh, even those customers see trainers training and they see new ones all the time. They're not comfortable with that. People don't want to see new faces all the time. Yeah. They want to see a new face that's celebrated coming in yeah. to like to the team. And the team has a, a core, like a nucleus to it. Mm-hmm. Right. And if somebody leaves, there's like some reason to leave it and they even get notified why. Right. Well, it's like, oh, this person's moving to California because they just uh, mm-hmm. became governor of California somehow. And they're, <laughs> they're like, oh, wow, somebody Whoa. from that lab became governor. That's <laughs> awesome. And like everybody like celebrates it and then they have a good send off. Like people feel good about that because yeah. then they got some closure or whatever. When they see three new faces in the gym and then they see three new, uh, three old faces that, uh, that are gone. Yeah. Like they're always wondering what's happening. Why is this like that? So why is this like that? So the questions abound. Yeah. Uh, and that's not good. And then also it takes time to develop people. It yeah. costs money to just say, hire and develop people. People don't, people don't realize yes. the amount of cost that takes because then you have to co- you have to take all those non-session hours or whatever you want to call it, yeah. right? To make sure that you're developing them. Consultations as well. Consultations yeah. are you're paying your own them for time. consultations. Don't so. even think your own time is money. Yeah, right? So exactly. if I'm developing somebody for uh, eight, 10, 15 hours a week, mm-hmm. that's 8, 10, 15 hours a week that I'm not dedicating to either that business or something else that I could be doing. Yeah, so, right? yeah, exactly. You're expending your own time, right? especially. And let's say you have three new hires, Yeah. right? If you're spending 15 hours per week with a person, that's pretty much your entire time, right? Right. And I know, and I know you know this feeling as much as I do. Like mm-hmm. I was, when I was in the thick of it, like 60 hour weeks, were not even close to out of the question. Oh yeah, I right. Know. Like it was. It was. Matter of fact, I would say consistent was a sixty-hour week. I was at the gym pretty much every day, and that was a lot of that time, especially when I was going through high transitionary periods. Was you know trying to make sure that I was taking on new trainers, training them how to effectively go out there, and that's really tough. That's and really you can tough get to burnt out from that because for sure. developing a new trainer should be to me. It should be fun. Like yeah. I love it. It's my. It's one of my favorite things that I do. Maybe my favorite. Uh, I do a lot of things that I like though, which is cool. Um, <laughs> but I do, yeah. yeah it's well, it's, my life's fun. Uh, I mean, we get to do this stuff. I like sit in a podcast. Yeah, yeah, wolf yeah. dogs here sleeping. It's everything's great. Um, but uh, that's one of the things I love to do. However, if I did it time after time and people, uh, I didn't do it well and they transitioned away or they quit uh, in the process or whatever, mm-hmm. now I just feel like I'm spinning wheels and wasting my time. Also, then I start to feel like something is wrong with what I'm doing. And then that makes you not as productive as whatever else you're going to do. Yeah. You're just not as happy in life in general, yep. uh, which is going to make everything more difficult. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's a, a really good point. It's tough, sure. man. Yeah. Because you, that burnout is going to show up for the rest of the business, right? Yeah. If you're happy and productive yourself, then that's going to continue to seep through yeah. for the rest of the team. I think it's also important to have a, a like, it, it depends where you, like how close you are to the people that you're, you're always going to be supervising, no matter what hierarchy, you're always going to be supervising some amount of people, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you have, uh, even if you are technically overseeing 500 people, but let's say they have, those 500 people have 10 main managers or something, yeah. right? You really supervise those 10 people. Yep. And those are the people that you got to keep the most pulse on. Yeah. You, know, you still want to know like you know some of the other 500 and stuff like that but you can only do so much so you keep pulse on 10 of them right you should have an idea of what's going on with them mm-hmm. right if you're a leader so to me i mean obviously i'm just in charge i just have uh however many trainers that we have now uh seven yeah. now because we just hired two yes uh five plus two equals seven mike right wow seven. Use yeah, I'll use Python to do that. There you go. <laughs> uh, Mike's teaching me coding, so uh, but whatever. Um, so I need to have a pulse on what's going on. So I need to have an idea with that many people. It's not a ton of people, right? Yeah. I should easily, especially because I do payroll, I should know how much they're getting paid. So I look at payroll and be like, oh man, like if, for example, if I'm looking at your payroll, I'm used to doing your payroll. It's only seven people, mm-hmm. right? I'm used to doing your payroll. Uh, let's say we're three months down the line, all of a sudden you have a really down payroll. Yeah. I need to know that and be like, what happened? Is, what's happening? Yeah. Like, is Alec pulling away from training or did something happen to a lot of Alec's clients and he's in a bad spot now? Like, cause yeah. he might be like, oh, man. or is it just something like I go to you and be like, Alec, did this happen? And not from a, a disciplinary thing, just to be like, Curious. dude, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. And then you go, well, Dan, I was just on vacation. 
for almost the whole pay period. And you're like, I'm like, oh shit, all right. You know, like, you know, so like whatever <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, or you're like, no, man, I lost like, I lost four clients. Like the four clients that you paused were all my clients, da, 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 or whatever. I need to know that stuff because then I, I've taken care of it before it gets to be like a month, two months, three months where you're financially starting to struggle. And what's going to happen? You're going to start to look for other jobs or yeah. you're going to start to like, at least become somewhat resentful or jaded from training because you're not getting what you want out of it, right? Or maybe your schedule is the opposite. Maybe it's gotten insane and you're like, Dan, I'm doing school. I want to train 20 hours a week. And yeah. now you're training 35 hours a week, yeah. right? Then I should be like, is this what you want to do? Or are you just saying yes to everything? Mm -hmm. You know, like, are you doing okay in school? Like, I, sh I need to know that. So that way I take steps before anything happens, yeah. right? And again, that doesn't even count the human element, which I think is the most important part, because you should care about the people that are around you in the first place, right? Yeah. Uh, but besides that, even just from a business element, you should do that uh, for exactly the reasons that I listed. So yeah. that's, yeah, so. I mean, it makes sense, though. Like, if, if you care about the people, then at the end of the day, they're going to want to be there, right? Yeah. And then once again, and I like the, you, do you say there are three Ps? There's the people, product, and then process. Process, okay, yeah. I, wish I like the three Ps. Uh, there's that's a, somebody, I want to give somebody credit for this because I read it somewhere. Yeah. And it's super famous. And now I feel like an idiot because I don't remember, I don't know, I read a lot of stuff, good and terrible too, probably. <laughs> but um, I don't, do you know what it's from, Mike? No, I do not. Do you, can you look it up real quick and get and get back to us? Nothing makes us feel like more of an official podcast yeah, than us, asking the producer to uh, look to something it. up. Oh, that was great. Yeah, now I feel like yeah, I'm I talking. Say, I'm Rogan talking to young Jamie. I was gonna say we're like actually we're actual podcasters yeah, now. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure it's official because he always has Jamie. He's like Jamie's a Google wizard. Yeah. He's like Jamie, look this up. Yeah. So yeah, now uh, now I feel super uh, professional. You might as well be Joe Rogan. What am I yeah. looking up? Uh, <laughs> that's important. Uh, people process product. And then it should come up with some kind of, I feel like it's a book. I don't know. Maybe it's Good to Great, which is an excellent business book, by the way. Good to Great. From Good to Great, I think it's from called. Good to Great. I think I've heard uh, From Good to Great. Yeah, so yeah, it's like. Good to Great itself, no. Uh, it's a, I think it's one of the best business books that you can read because it talks about uh, a group of companies that are considered great. So they have metrics, obviously, that mm -hmm. what they consider a great company. And, that, and you know, it has to do with revenue. It has to do with like surveys of employees. It has to do with like a transition of employees or employees yeah. that are hired within and like a bunch of stuff like that. Um, so then they figured out what were great companies and then they tried to figure out what was uh, what the comparison of them. So like what are the things that these companies did, all of them? So they, I think they had like seven or something like that uh, that they had really detailed and then they figured out uh, what those companies did well. And then they also had companies that were doing really well revenue-wise and then kind of tanked and they figured out what those companies had in common and screwed up. Hmm. So it's really cool. It's really cool. It helped me a lot with business. Actually. That's interesting. Yeah. I might have to look that up, see if I can I think I have a hard audible. copy of it. Uh, I'm more of a, I'm a, an auditory learner as we've, as we've talked yeah, about before. Yeah. Audio so, books. so yeah, audiobooks are going to be the way that I'm going to I get go. listen. I love the, I love the idea behind audiobooks. Yeah. But if I listen to an audiobook, because even when I listen to podcasts and stuff in the car mm -hmm. and I listen to a ton of them, a lot of times I have to rewind because yeah. I like, my mind will go somewhere else. Like somebody will be like, da da da. And I'll be like, oh yeah. And then I'll start thinking about stuff and then it'll be like 30 minutes later and I'm like, I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> you know, like I don't, I don't yeah. know what just was talked about. Yeah, so. I mean, it's uh, the concentration skill is a uh, a different topic in its own. Sometimes I I float through podcasts as well, but that's an important part about business yeah. too and developing people. You should know how yeah. they learn. Yes, right. Yeah, uh, you know what we're? <laughs> do you know what Friday's development is? I'm no, I'm curious. We're now. taking personality. Uh, we're taking personality tests. Wait, are we really? We're is this real. because of for the real. conversation yes, that we were having? Hundred percent. No, really? Yes, it is. Which yeah. one are we doing? Uh, I think we're going to do the one that you detailed in the Briggs hey. Myers, Myers Briggs. Myers Briggs. That's a long that's a long one, dude. I know. Well, well, at the very least we'll get people started on it. I was going to say cuz yeah. well, I think we could get it through it in the hour yeah. or even less, but it's like it's an extensive uh It is. I don't think it takes I think it takes like 20 minutes. Okay. I can't remember how long it took the first time. I mean, 20 time I minutes it. of constantly uh, answering bubbles. questions yes. yeah because yeah. you're answering yourself yeah. so it's not like you're working out problems like you're literally answering questions that for the most part you know i'm kind of curious if i get the same result because i've done it before yeah, yeah i've done it before too 
I was curious. I I did the uh, what was the one that you just uh, told me about? Enneagram. Enneagram. Yeah, I just did that one, and I was very surprised. What by were my, you? Was a four. Oh, I'm a seven. Uh, I thought I was like my eight was uh, my two, three, four, and eight were yeah. really far out. Okay. Uh, but the four was like, I can't remember what it is, but it was something like the other ones were all ones that I could see myself being. Yeah. But then my that having the four the most was really surprising to me. Yeah. So. But I think you're right. It is important to understand your personnel as well. And yeah. I think that's really cool that we're going to do that because it is yeah, I think like, it's interesting. It's also a fun team bonding activity because yeah. uh, and I think that's huge is like um, and this is something that I like to talk about as a lot, a lot as well is one thing I wish I had done more effectively when I was a fitness director was created a better culture, right? It was created a culture where we want to come in and do those developments and have fun with each other. And like, what are you just sit and try and figure each other out? And like, what, what did you get on yours? What did you, yeah. like, the wood? Oh, that's total you like stuff like that. Right. Where we can sit there and have fun with it. But that's right? important. And people talk about culture all the time, but they never teach you how to do that. Yeah. You know, and that's so unfortunate to me because I think, uh, I think exactly what you said is, is it, it makes a big difference. It makes people want to be somewhere too. For sure. Uh, and I think beforehand like even when you create a business you go how do i want to run the business Mm -hmm. and i constantly have always said the mad lab family because i always feel like that's the culture that i want to uh that i want to um whatever present i guess there's a better word for that but uh so it's not one of high vocabulary for sure (laughs) but uh but a family oriented one anyway yes uh and not just from employees but from clients too Mm -hmm. so i want everybody like when they're in the space to feel like they belong. They can be super comfortable. So even like when I have people in there, I always say, you can use this. You can use this. Oh, you can do this. I give you guys keys to the place, whatever. Um, so I think that's important. And then you try to run with everybody's ideas. And then everybody can be as ridiculous as they want to be. And that does start mm-hmm. with you. So like I, for me, this just starts with me. So I just, I'm always ridiculous and saying whatever. So I'm sure you guys feel comfortable because you're like, Dan's crazy. So yeah. we can be yeah. pretty crazy. So uh, yeah, uh, man, that's a, that's a tricky one, right? Cause it like, is. I think, uh, so many people get so caught up right away. And I remember, um, I was having a meeting. This was back when I like first got promoted to be a manager, um, at the downtown Seattle location. I was, uh, I was having a meeting with one of my team members and she just started snickering like about 15 minutes into the meeting, maybe even less than that. It might've been like five minutes. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I'm like, what's, what's so funny. And she's like, because you're trying so hard right now to be a manager. You're trying so hard. <laughs> what a call out. Right? No, That's this ballsy. is just this That's is awesome. just this is just who she is. That's this cool is the kind though. of yeah. the kind of relationship that we had. Yeah. And she just knew who I was, right? She knew like why I had gotten promoted to the position, like where where I was with like relationship building and stuff like that. And she's like, What the hell is he trying to be right now? And she called me out. She did. Yeah. I'm really glad she did. Because it actually changed a lot of how I um, interacted with my team from that point on. Uh, I was, I caught myself a lot of times where I try and be very managery. Yeah. Right. And I would always look at myself and be like, this isn't you, man. Like this isn't just be yourself. They want, they like you. Yeah. They like the real you and the team that I have, the nucleus team that I had when I, I eventually got promoted once again. Um, I mean, like, honestly, I would hope that they would still stand by this, but they loved me. They loved me because I was who I was. Well, right? you still like, talk to a lot of them. Too well, yeah, some yeah. of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember you saying, "Oh, this person, da da da." da. So like, yeah, that's cool that you're still able to do that. Yeah, um, man. I mean, a lot of those people were also like former, you know, uh, managers of mine too, right? So right. like, I've I, I'm, I have close connections through the company as a whole. But that says right? a lot about you, and I, I think that's imp- important to stay too. Is like people, you're you're more natural being who you are, right? Yeah. So if you yeah. you should be because that's. Doing things in your natural state is the way that you're going to work the best. Yeah. If you go into an interview and you pretend to be somebody else, expectations are going to be different. Yep. You're going to have to hold that facade the whole time and something is going to crumble. If it's not your professional life, it's going to be your personal life. Yeah. So you need to figure that out. So you should be honest with who you are. And like when, when I say that, you can't just be, if you do something ridiculous on the weekends, you don't obviously have to bring that to work. Like you don't have to be like, a ridi- yeah. you know, like you still have just i'm just talking about like your overall personality there's some things that can be at work and there's some things that have to stay yeah in yeah, yeah. For sure. you can be separate right? right yeah but then sometimes uh i've had managers in the past be like well you uh your friend you're you're too you're too much friends with your employees oh and yeah i'm like yeah. okay well i like yeah. yeah i like my employees 
and I know them all as people. Like I know everything about them. But if they screw up, then to me that's almost even a worse breach because then mm-hmm. it's like I, they know me, they know the way that they work, and if they did something, and either it's got to be on accident, but if they did it on purpose, then we really have an issue, and I should have no problem talking to them about it very directly. Yeah. Right. If you're gonna be a leader, you need to be direct. Whether and that's and that's it really in any kind of relationship, whether it's business or it's personal or it's your family or whatever it is, like you should be a direct person and tell tell people what your expectations are. It all comes down to that. And then mm-hmm. if if an expectation is broken, then what happens after that? And you see, as long as you're direct about that, you'll have you won't have any issues. People say that those things are a problem because people have problems either setting expectations or controlling things emotionally. Yeah. Right. Which you can't. You also, as a leader, you got to be better than that at work, right? Yeah. So, I yeah, mean, you course. can still get upset and you still get mad about something, but take a minute, think about it, and be like, all right, well, here's the convers- here's what I want to say, but here's the conversation I'm going to have, right? I'm going to have a direct conversation, mm-hmm. tell them what, what happened wrong, tell them how it affected me, tell them how it affected the business, and then tell them uh, what will happen if it continues and then how we're going to change it, right? It's yeah. so, like those things. You need to have a way of having a conversation. Yeah, man. And I think... The important part about that as well is the closer you are to your team, right? And what you're talking about, like being too friendly, quote unquote, right? Um, I agree. I think that there is, there's obviously lines, right? For sure. Yeah, obviously lines. lines. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, if people really like you, they like you for who you are, they just like you and they don't really necessarily see that you as their boss, right? But at the end of the day, you're the one who is directing them, right? Um, they're probably going to want to work for harder for you anyways. Right. And I think that's an important notion is, uh, is cause I mean, when you think about it, look at it like this, right? Like, um, for instance, I'll actually use a completely non-specific like business, non-business related, um, idea is I grew up with just my mom, right? My mom was really good about just kind of letting me do what I want to do for the most part. Right. She kind of let me live my own life. Right. My mistakes, she she made me own my mistakes right away, right? That was my my cross to bear. But she never really sat there and like forcefully punished me, but she was very direct with me constantly. Very, very direct with me. If something was wrong, she was like, okay, this is how it is. If something needed to change, this is how it is. At the end of the day, the difference was, was I didn't push the limits or try and get in trouble or do anything crazy, not because... I was scared, not because I was intimidated, not because of anything else. At the end of the day, the one thing that I didn't want the most was to disappoint my mom and that trust and breach that trust. And I think the same type of relationship is important to be able to develop in that type of, in a fitness director, personal training world, right? Is if you can have a relationship where they want to make sure that they're trying and doing what they know is right, right? By your standards, and trying to help out consistently and making sure that you are happy because you're giving so much towards them, right? Yeah. That that at the end of the day, they're not worried about, they're not intimidated about losing their job. They're not intimidated by you. They're not scared about getting written up. What they really don't want is to essentially, A, let you down, but also at the end of the day, just they, they want you to be able to do what you're doing as well and they want to be a part of that. Yeah, which I think is a is an amazing thing because I mean, you have people doing extra stuff for you like that, then you're like, oh man, that's really cool. Like they really want this to happen, or like, oh, we can't we can't let Dan do this, this, and this because we know like he's gonna be unhappy doing this, so yeah. we're gonna do this instead. Which is which I think is amazing. Like that's one of my favorite things about business and about working with a team mm-hmm. as well. And it's funny that you mentioned that about your mom because my parents were the opposite. Uh, I mean, God bless them Mm because I love them, but uh, they're very much the opposite uh, with stuff. And I just, then you, as a child, if you're, if you're afraid of getting in trouble, eventually that breeds like anger. Yeah. And then you will rebel any chance that you don't think that they're going to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing with, with, uh, with jobs, right? If you have somebody and they're really unhappy with management and they feel like they could be fired at any given time. If they have a chance to do something that they know no one's going to know about, whether it just be just lack of production and just not working hard, Mm -hmm. uh, or if it is doing something like underhanded or whatever, they're going to, they're going to usually take that chance or they're at a much higher percentage uh, chance of doing those things. Yeah. Right. Uh, So I, I don't like when people, I just think ruling by, 
uh, ruling by fear and by like punishment and stuff like that and having people just do things because of that is the worst way to do things. It's a, it's a very short term solution. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So no, I agree. Cool, man. Well, I think that about wraps up today's episode. Honestly, man, I think we're starting to run out of time. Now we're all business experts. I was going to say, thankfully, do we know how we can officially say we can develop? Wait, what is the, did you look that thing up? Oh yeah, you never did, did you? Yes, I looked it up. What'd you uh, find? The three P's of business, it's people, process, and product. And okay. that, that is attributed to a Marcus Lemonis, who's a business expert consultant. Did Mar- he write any Marcus book? Marcus Lemonis? I don't How did I know? Where did I learn this? It, it, could, it could be in a book, but I didn't see it. All right, well, good old Marcus. It might uh, have been in a book not written by him. Yeah, maybe right? it, it could was. have been a quote. I don't know. Well, I don't remember how I learned it, but that stuck with me. Maybe it could have been actually in a company's development. So I might have been working for a different company could have been. and I learned it and I was like, and they probably didn't apply it. But then I was like, oh, this is great. Yeah. People throw a lot of acronyms at you in the business world. It's hilarious because I've worked for a couple of companies that had amazing developments like that. Like yeah. they had some crazy ones and then they didn't follow them at all. And I was oh. like, I was like, how could you just have this great development for your employees? Mm-hmm. And it's so amazing. And I'm like, I learned so much from it. And then you manage, and then I would get managed in certain ways. I'd be like, but I'm doing mm-hmm. what you just told me in this development. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, it doesn't work. With other than I'm like, okay, I don't know, who am I? So yeah, I've, I've had that happen a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, I think some that's very specific m- examples that I'll tell you off. Yeah. yeah. Off air. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's some, there's a lot of misalignment. I think that that's true to certain respects in relationship and human nature in general, right? Is when yeah. your, your development and what you're doing and what you're talking about. Um, it doesn't align deep down with what you're doing right in, you know, behind scenes, right? Cause having a development looks really good. And it's something that everybody talks about being a crucial part of business, but you know, owning and respecting that development as part of your, you know, actual yeah. going ons in the gym is something that you might not see as often. Yeah. And it, it just, a, it, it still amazes me because uh, there was one company in particular that I probably learned. I mean, I I have like four books mm-hmm. that that they said to read uh, that were amazing that nice. I would have never probably heard of otherwise. Uh, that were great and have helped me in my business now, like exponentially. Has made me so much better. Nice. Which is almost like they were like, Dan, we don't want you to work here and do this stuff, but we do want you to have your own business and do this as yeah. a competitor. I'm like, all right. You were, <laughs> so, meant, to, you were meant to be great, young I mean, one. Thank you. you push for, you yeah, away. Yeah, thank you for that. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. So it's just interesting the way that life works and the way people do business. But Very I think you're true. right. People think that developments are a certain way. They just need to listen to some of them. Yeah, yeah. Because there's some smart people out there, like old Marcus. A good old Marcus. I didn't know that came from. So <laughs> shout out to Marcus. Marcus Thanks, Marcus, Marcus for the three podcast. Uh, cause now we're taking sponsors from individuals like Mike Tyson and his tiger. Yep. Mm-hmm. And specifically the tiger. Mike Tyson's tiger is uh, what I want to be, be our podcast. Well, it's probably decision I want, maker. I want to be the lab podcast sponsored by Mike Tyson's tiger. Yeah. Yeah. I like it's it. A, I like got it. Got a good ring to it. It does. Yeah. Cool. cool. All right, guys. Well, if you liked the episode, we hope you did make sure to like subscribe, follow us. So, Go to YouTube, like, subscribe, turn that little bell ring on so every time we put out a new episode like today's, you're going to get that notification. As well, if you like podcasts instead of YouTube videos, make sure to try and find us on all platforms for podcasts. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Make sure to subscribe. Once again, turn on those notifications if possible, and we'll be hearing from you very soon, hopefully. Take it away, Dan. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of... The last.